Hi everyone, um, welcome to um, a colouring tutorial today from Lulu Mayo's A Million Magical Creatures. Now I had a request if I could do a picture from this book, so um, I thought I would. Now I have done um, a few in here already and I was going to show you this one that I did and I was really pleased with how the pencils went down on the page and this I used Prismacolor. I haven't got lots of Prismacolor but I used some of the ones that I've got and I did use a few other pencils as well. So I thought we would use a similarly soft pencil on this page. Now I'm going to concentrate on this um, sort of griffiny critter and um, whether we do all the other details today or not depends sort of how long it's gonna it's taking us really for the uh, for the film i've actually got my camera i'm filming upside down so i can't i'm trying to look and work out where it's counting the length of the video there it is because it's all upside down on my screen a little bit confusing but anyway so what i've done is i've picked a soft pencil and to see how well it lays down on the page so i've picked um my castle art gold now i haven't used these lots so you'll have to sort of forgive me um if i'm not brilliant but i thought it would be fun to have a go i have done a swatch sheet now i don't normally do swatch sheets i know but i found out a really good reason for doing these not only because sometimes the um colors on the pencils don't match the actual colors it's not so much the case with these i didn't find it was too bad but i've put a little tiny dot on each one in white pen and it allows me to see which ones don't work see that particular one there i don't know how well you can see i don't want to blur it out um the dot has gone pink it's taken on the pigment so I did that on all of them and it allowed me to see whether it took on the pigment of the pen or not because sometimes I want to do white dots but it spoils the page if um, it just goes pink. So that was interesting. But anyway, I've chatted on. Let's actually get on with some colouring. Now what I wanted to do was I was going to do him like I did the one I just showed you, the previous page. He's gold and I rather liked him in gold, so I thought I would do this guy in gold. We'll try and make some golds from the gold pencils. Let's have a go. I've not tried this before, so it will be quite fun. So I'm going to start with a dark brown. Now we have got three um, dark, we've got a Mars black, which is a really, really dark, a burnt umber, and a slate grey, and a permanent brown. I'm just going to actually use my swatch chart to see that the slate grey is actually quite brown. The permanent brown is slightly reddish. The Mars black is quite purpley black brown. The burnt umber is the shade that I'm looking for. So that's what I'm going to go for. It's just a dark brown. And I'm going to colour all the areas that I want to be dark. I'm going to zoom into the top of him. So we're only going to be concentrating on the sort of feathery bits. Or mane, is it? I don't know. So the bits that would be dark. So under here. So I'm going to go with this and my aim is to get it as dark as possible along that black line. I can hear an alarm going off, a sort of car alarm or something. And I hope it's not too loud on the camera. It's not really very relaxing hearing alarm. But anyway, this is my, I've done a few videos since back from my Easter break, but um, not many. So I thought it would be a nice opportunity to have a chatter with you and uh, I hope I feel like I've missed you even though you don't talk to me um, well you talk to me through the comments which is nice I've missed chatting to you all and telling you what's been going on but uh, having had a two week break from filming apart from I did a flip through Sea of Flowers which was a little experiment just to check out my new filming space I'm in my new filming space today um, so during my two weeks off we shifted around some furniture and bits and thing bits and pieces and had a bit of a chuck out and made room for a desk for me outside of I usually film in the sitting room at my desk there. That's a bit messy, wasn't it? But um it can be a problem in various ways. Firstly, sometimes my children want to live stream and so I can't film. Um and they live stream for at least two hours. Um, if they're home at working, because they, between the two of them, they have two days a week at home working, they find me filming off-putting. Because although I'm talking and they're, 
they find it really dull not interested in colouring and being 16 it just distracts them from their work and um, also sometimes there are noises um, that I can hear in the sitting room that I can't hear in this little room here because on the other side of the house um, the house is small it's only next door to the sitting room so we decided it would be good just to move the filming part of my hobby in here so I will still be editing in the other room so I, I won't be um, away from my family all the time and like today nobody's here anyway so I'm still I could easily do it in the other room but it also means I can keep the tripod set up on the desk all the time if I'm in the middle of a page I can just leave it out and uh, I don't have to tidy it all away and things like that so it's just there were quite a lot of advantages and it's sort of trying it out really to see if it works so for example this afternoon one of my sons is not is home from college he's going to be doing some work um and i could come in here and film and uh, he could he, while he's sort of getting on with his work sort of thing so uh there is sort of we're going to try it and see i don't want and it also means that when they've got their 10 week summer holiday i don't need to film 10 weeks of videos in advance or make them sit and be quiet while i do filming and things like that so there are lots of advantages and we're just trialing it now i've got natural light as well in this room which i thought would be a big advantage i'm only i'm not going to do the body yet i'm just going to do this as i say the sort of rough bit the sort of feathery bit so um but the sun keeps coming in and out and I don't know if that's going to affect how things look. I'm hoping it will be okay because um, my camera is pretty good, it should adjust. And I put the light on, my lamp, even though it doesn't. we don't really need it. And then if it goes dark, um, the lamp automatically adjusts as well to the brightness of the room. So hopefully it will all work out. So we'll see. But uh, so we had a good move around. It only took us a day to do all the moving. There's a lot of heavy lifting and shifting up two flights of stairs as well. And um, I'm not I'm not good at lifting heavy things. Um, I've got a frozen shoulder still at the minute, so I didn't want to risk causing any damage. So my sons and my husband did it, which was really good of them. I did um, I did not help. I did all the vacuuming and the tidying and all the you know those sorts of bits and pieces car carried small light things and yeah and the next day our thighs were all aching from going up and down the stairs so much i think i'm going to go under here with the dark or oh, we've still got that bit as well so uh, yeah so it's quite an adventure but we had a lovely two weeks off the first week um the children had quite a lot of homework and spent most mornings working and then afternoons chilling playing their games so we didn't do a lot then and my husband had the second week off and it was the Easter weekend and one son still had homework he was doing that weekend so we, again we didn't do much but um, on the um, Tuesday after Easter my husband went to Oxford I'm just filling in these are quite small so I'm not going to worry here but because we've got quite a big area I'm just going to bring that brown out just a little bit and down a bit he went to the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford and there was a is it Pizarro 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 exhibition that he went to which he really enjoyed but I I'm not so interested in looking at art. I just like to get on and colour. I do like looking at um, people's colouring pages, but I'm not so interested in looking at classical art. You know, I have done that before. I have been to the Van Gogh or Gogh Museum in Amsterdam and to the Monet and Manet. I like Monet and Manet better than Van Gogh, to say. Now, for the feathers, I'm going to do the bottoms dark and we're trying to get a bit of shine on them. And uh, yeah, so I, you know, I have done a bit of looking at um, art, but I'm not. I w would rather just be doing my own thing, you know. But that's just me. Now the tail, I'm going to do similar to this lot. Um, I'm trying to think. I think 
make it dark there. We've got to try and add a sort of fluffy look to it already, like that. So that's our first brown, the burnt umber. Now I want the, my next um, brown to be slightly lighter and slightly more yellowy. So I'm having a look. We've got a sepia, it's very red. I don't want that. And a cinnamon, which is again quite red. I'm thinking maybe we're going to go a step to the yellow ochre. Um, so I'm going to use that, I think, quite far away, aren't we? Yellow ochre. And... Uh, so I'm going to just go back over the colour we've done and extend it down with this yellow. Like that. Now I just say I've got a few pieces of paper behind the page here. I didn't mention that at the beginning. I always do when I colour. Unless it's a single-sided book and I'm really confident that there's not going to be any ink transfer I always put some paper behind um, always on a double page because even if if there's colouring on one side the, the pencil can transfer but even if it's just um, the print in the book it can sometimes transfer onto the other side of the page I have had it happen it's a bit irritating I've just gone over the line a bit here let's see if I can I think I brought my eraser through from next door um, somewhere sorry I bought this is where um, I might find I'm missing bits and things and I have to go next door to collect them but uh, I might have to duplicate some of my items that I use most to uh, make sure that I've got everything I need on hand but we'll see how it all goes I've actually had to order a second lamp because um, um, I brought my really nice BenQ recording lamp into here and uh, my husband said oh I've got a lamp I don't use on my desk you can borrow that and it's one I used to have on my desk I used to use for recording actually it wasn't particularly good and uh, it's so pale and small I have to put it right over the top of my book like sort of there so <laughs> it's uh, not ideal so I've ordered myself another BenQ lamp and interestingly they didn't have any on their website at all last time I bought directly from them and they were just directing you to Amazon to buy so I bought it from Amazon and they had two only colours and my, one I've got is gold, it's really pretty, um, but um, they only had silver, which is fine, or blue. Now, I really didn't want blue anyway, but the blue was twice the price of the silver. And I just couldn't understand why. They were exactly the same lamp. There are two designs of lamp, and the design I like is the more expensive one, of course. <laughs> but um, I don't know why the blue one was twice the price, but fortunately it wasn't the one I wanted, but had... Um, had uh, the colour I wanted been twice the price, I'd have just bought the other colour because uh, I'm not spending lots of money just for um, um, just for a certain colour. So we're going to extend this down a bit because this is quite a big area. Now this bit, I just noticed we haven't done anything on it. I might just start it with this colour rather than going in really dark because it's sort of standing above the rest and just fade that down and do the same from here and try and get some sort of shine in the middle see how that works out for us so the idea of these little um, feathery peat bits is that they're gonna these are gonna shine at the very bottom so we're gonna slowly lighten the color to the tip maybe leave the tip just a little bit white should be okay I hope it'll work so I said just experimenting with gold tones for the first time with these pencils so I don't know we'll see but yes after um, my husband had his day out and next day we went to WWT Slimbridge World Wetlands Trust and we are members of the 
Trust and they do lots of good conservation work for wetland birds and other um, wildlife as well and uh, we went there and uh, had a look at the birds and things that they have on show. Now um, my husband's favourites are the nenes, they're the Hawaiian geese and they usually like being hand fed but we've got avian flu around so we can't risk hand feeding anything because if say you hand fed a wild bird, I'm just moving some pencils away, and then hand fed one of their um, precious rare birds then you could spread the um, avian flu between the birds. It's not um, transmissible to humans as far as we're aware but um, obviously we don't want um, to um, hurt the birds so uh, you can't feed at the minute which is a shame but um, okay there's that colour that was the yellow ochre now we're going to go to I've got to move across to the yellows I think unless I use that one what's that the terracotta light so I hope you can't see my head in the where's the terra I'm just looking on my swap sheet but to show you what I'm looking for terracotta light is there it's very orangey but it's quite is it goldy is it gonna work or should I go I th tempted to go straight to the cadmium yellow I think I'm gonna do that Yellow. and then we use a second shade of yellow I've also noticed I haven't been doing here so I'm just going to grab my unburnt umber and just do the top of these and then the um, yellow ochre like that <clears throat> excuse me and then the um, cadmium yellow so we were very lucky it's obviously springtime it's a little bit early for a lot of the baby birds. I'm going right over everything and I'm going to do that on all of them. And bring the colour down quite far now. Okay. Um, but we saw a few babies. There are some a lot of wild grey lag geese that uh, that uh, stay at, at Slimbridge. They know where they're... Well, it's not as many as they used to be. When you used to be able to hand feed or feed the birds, you could buy food and feed the birds, it's lovely. Um, when you used to be able to do that all the time, there were loads of them. But these days they don't let you feed. Um, firstly, um, they stopped it because they didn't want people crowding in groups and then the avian flu as well. So um, they stopped you being able to feed, which means that the grey lags don't hang around quite so much, but some of them know that it's fairly safe they have a fox-proof perimeter fence, which means this predation is, is reduced. And so they um, go there to have their babies. So we saw a set of um, goslings. They were only actually just twins. There were two. They were quite big and they were snoozing. That was so cute. So we saw those. That was lovely. And um, we saw um, the crested screamer baby. And the crested screamers are very reptilian looking grey feathered birds but the baby was gorgeous chestnut brown or fluffy and cute so we were very lucky so we saw those but we tend to go there a lot at this time of year to see all the babies now what the um, trust do is when the rare birds lay eggs they take them away they put them in incubators and they um, keep them safe because although they've got a fox-proof fence, they've got no netting, which mean at the in the main show areas mainly, which means that the crows and other um, and the um, sort of big birds can come and take the babies or the eggs, so they um, keep them um, safe elsewhere, and uh, to make sure that they can breed them because it's part of the uh, part of the idea of the place is to. Uh, you know keep the rare breeds going but you can see there are a lot of um, mallards and um, things like that I'm just wondering what this line is um, mallards, coots, moorhens those sort of lovely birds you see those um, is it the cage? is it holding up the cage rather than holding up this little critter? 
So I'm thinking, I'm sure he isn't being held up by a string. Anyway, we went there and then we had the day of moving all the furniture around. And then on the Friday, we just had a very chilled day, which was nice. And then on the Saturday, we visited um, my father-in-law, which was fun. And the children got to see their cousins. And my husband got to see his brother. That's really nice. A bit of family get together and um, a sort of for Easter. And then Sunday, I skyped my parents, which we do on Sundays, and my sister. That was fun. I think these are going down quite well on this paper. So am I quite pleased? Oops, my pencil's getting in my way. I need to put quite a lot up on these longer feathers though, because there's only one more colour to go. Sorry, I'm knocking my book along as I'm colouring. I'm quite liking these shades, I think they're working as a gold. I haven't left much space in the tail, have I, for any more colour? It's quite rough at the minute, we can always um, do now my final colour. I, hmm, I'm just looking, I'm going to go for the lemon yellow light because it's quite bright. Um, I'll show you the swatch sheet. Oops. Oh, I can't pick it up. <laughs> so we have the Naples yellow is a bit too orangey or peachy for my liking. The golden yellow, again, this one I wanted something really bright. So that's what I'm going for. But it's blunt and it's got green on the end of it, which is a bit strange. You can hear my um, solar panel inverter in this room. Oh. It's just slapped in my sharpener. Now I just realised a problem. I don't have a um, sorry, a bin in here. So if my sharpener gets full, that could be interesting. But anyway, this is a new sharpener. I shouldn't have snapped the pencil, and it's done it again. Hmm. Maybe a sharpener doesn't suit this brand of pencil. Don't know. One more try. If it doesn't work, I shall pause the video. No, that's it. I've got a lot of pencil debris now in front of me. Let's just move that one. Right. So we have our lemon yellow light. Let's see how that works out for us. I'm going to try and go over the top of it all so that it can all look quite vibrant. But still, I want to leave a bit of white at the end of each sort of feather. It doesn't really show up, does it? I don't think it's showing up on this paper at all. Let's see, it is making a difference. It is adding some vibrancy. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> it's really wobbly. I think I'm going to have to go and sharpen it with my hand crank sharpener in a minute. Because that one makes such a huge difference to how well, how hard the lead is. It seems to harden the lead. Bear with me. That worked perfectly first time, which was good, but my pencil looks quite short now, unfortunately. But the um, hand crank sharpener does take away quite a lot of the wood and make the pencil look short, but the um, it leaves the um, lead part really long, so that's good. And it feels so much stronger, which is good. 
Maybe I should all sharpen these with that sharpener. I know some people really recommend them for, particularly for softer pencils. I've been advised to use it on my new prismas when I get them. So, especially for a first sharpen, to make sure they're sort of strong, as it were. I haven't got, oh, I've got my brush. My husband treated himself to a brush. He's always borrowing mine. Um, he doesn't do pencil work, but he sometimes use, well, he sometimes uses a sort of graphite pencil to mark things out. And then goes over in pen and then erases. And then he has all his um, sort of rubber bits. And he comes and borrows my pencil. So he um, treated himself to his own. Now I fear that if I was using a Prisma and doing this, it would be spreading that colour down a bit. But it isn't, they don't um, do that so much. But I think it's fine. I'm just observing that it's different. I'm not saying it's, I think it's, it works well. I'm happy with the effect that I'm getting. I hope it's looking a bit more sort of vibrant and shiny, which is what I'm trying to achieve. I'm leaving a little bit of white but getting some of this yellow down as well. I think for this bit we can um, leave a shine there. Yeah. Feels like I've been colouring him for ages. I think indefinite, I don't know because I stopped the video how long been going for. So I think what I'm going to do is just do him and do the other bits in a separate video. And I also, I might, yeah, we need to think about a background. We've got these stars in the background. Hmm. I think about that because it's sort of a load of sky, isn't it? Really. I'm not sure. I'm also thinking about his sort of body and fur and what to do with that. I've got a few ideas. So I'll have a think. What would you do? Have a think. You can see how now I've used my hand crank sharpener. I can confidently press quite hard with this and know the core is going to... Um, survive which is good quite near the bottom of these already now if there's not enough white at the bottom you could white out the um, black line just to emphasize that but I think I'm okay with what we've got going on here I'm going to try and leave a little bit of white on here. Can you see? Yeah. I don't know why I'm feeling so hungry. <laughs> so early. Never mind. Now I'm sitting closer to my doorbell. So if my doorbell rings, it's going to be really loud. I will try and make sure I edit that out if that happens. I'm sitting much further away from my telephone, so if that rings, it shouldn't be too loud. So again, sort of advantages and disadvantages of being in a different space. I can't move my doorbell. It's um, screwed to the wall. I could shut the door which is what I do when people are here and I'm recording. I quite like having it open when I'm on my own. Okay, there is our basic um, feathers, gold parts. Let's move them up a tad. Now I'm going to do his face next. And when I did um, him before, on the earlier picture, let me show you. I carried on the gold through the body, which I'm not going to do on this one, and did a slot, sort of pinky... Um, orangey face and I'm going to do that colour face but the body I'm going to do a different colour um, partly because 
it's going to be hard to make it shine with such a big area on the other picture he's a bit smaller and I don't want him to necessarily look the same so I'm going to choose either a light peach or a caffeine orange light I'm just having a look at my swap sheet it's so unlike me called cadmium orange light to use the swap sheet but as it's just because it came with one so cadmium orange light for the face and I'm just going to start with a really gentle circular motion layer and then just build it up really um yeah I used one first for the castle art metallics because the ends of the the dipped ends of the pencils look so similar I just couldn't tell and I needed to know which was slightly dark and which was slightly lighter so I could sort of you know grab the colour I wanted I'm just going to layer this up a little bit more until it's the colour that I want and I'm going to put some inside the ear it's just sort of quite childish to do inside the ear a sort of pink because quite often on a furry real furry critter it's quite dark in there and you can see lots of dark fur but I'm going to do it like that because I think these sort of cute cartoon styly it's fine I decided I'm going to do the body in a sort of brownish colour um, I'm just looking at what I've used already do I pick one of the colours I've used already I think maybe not but then I'm looking at my other choice and I don't have a lot I have a permanent brown Mm. I think I'm going to use the permanent brown now I'm just going to use it lightly to start with and I might add a different colour on top because it isn't exactly the colour that I'm looking for so I'm going to do it later and I'm going to try and do it liney like this now normally we try and eliminate the lines from our colouring but this is a furry little chap so if we keep the lines in it adds to the furry look hopefully you need to be a bit careful we don't want it to look like we've just scribbled all over it you know it's just doing a gentle just doing directional gentle directional colouring really and I think it can work He's a cute little chap, isn't he? Now, we haven't done his sort of beak. And I think we really want that to look quite gold, probably, as well. I'm just going to go over those liney bits as well. But trying to keep it directional. Now, you notice I'm just doing flat colouring at the minute. I'm not adding in any other colours. I'm just trying to sort of get the basics down. Can you see? I think so. It's quite tricky for me to tell. When I'm editing, I will hopefully um, be able to check if I've been making any major errors in my new setup. We did notice that at midday the sun comes right onto the desk and uh, on top of half of where the book would be, <laughs> which could be problematic. I have a blind in here, which I could use, but um, it's red. So we weren't sure whether it might just cast a red look across everything. So uh, that's something I'll have to sort of deal with and think about. Now this isn't quite, this is a sort of almost purpley brown, reddish. So I'm going to um, put another colour on top to get the sort of shade that I'm looking for. I'm going to go quite fast. little paws are so cute aren't they so cute I hope everyone's doing well I hope you all had a good Easter I uh, it's nice to have some time off from editing and putting videos up on YouTube which is the bit I don't find so much fun um, I like making videos and also I had more time for actual just colouring for myself which I do anyway always I always have a project on the go that's just mine not when I'm sharing with others sort of thing but um, 
I had two books I wanted to finish, which I finished, which was good. And I'm trying to think about what to do next. I know it sounds a bit prescribed, I'm going to finish this and finish that and what shall I do next. It isn't how it sounds. I don't put pressure on myself to hurry up and do this and that and the other. It's just that if I'm not sure what I want to colour one day and I'm not sure what I'm in the mood for, if I've got a book that I'm aiming to finish next, then I can just grab that. Do you see what I mean? And it gives, it stops me having to um, procrastinate with regards to choosing something. It's not always easy to choose your next colouring project slash page. You know, well, this is a bit messy. I'm just going to erase down those really dark lines there just a bit. It's a bit messy. So um, it just take and also um, if there's a book that I'm looking to finish, I work. I start sometimes working through it in order. So if I can't think of what to colour at all, I grab the next book I want to finish, and I do the next unfinished page, and then I don't waste time trying to pick a picture. I just then get on with it. And sometimes you're obviously in the mood for a specific type of picture. So you might think, right, I want to colour a, um, I don't know, I'm going to go for cinnamon on top of it all now. You might think, I'm in the mood for colouring a unicorn, I'm in the mood for colouring a rose, a flower, a petal, you know. So if you're that, then that's fine, you can go and find exactly what you want to colour. But this is for when you're like, oh, I just don't know what I want to do, I just want to do something you know, then it just takes the choice out of it, which I find helpful. And I also really like finishing books. It gives me such a sense of achievement and uh, and such a high. So, um, so aiming to finish something is great. Now I'm now, I finished my Arteza Mandala book. I finished Sea of Flowers and um, I've recorded flip throughs of both. You may, I may or may not have put them up yet. I don't always put them up in the order I film them. Um, I, oh, Sea of Flowers has gone up, but um, I don't think the Mandela book may have gone up quite yet. I try and spread them out a bit for you as well. Um, so next, I've got to decide where to go. Now, I had thought I would like to finish a Rita Berman book because I haven't finished any of hers. I've got four of them and they're all part of the way through. And the Walk Through the Seasons book... Um, is lovely and it's the one I've done the most pages in so I thought it might be the one to aim to finish next and sort of leaving pictures in the Lander book um, there's some really really lovely berry pictures and I love colouring berries so much I'm sort of leaving them because I want to enjoy them if you know what I mean and just not do them all right away and then have all the ones that I'm not so enthused by not that they're all lovely but if you know what I mean, I don't want to do all my favourites first. So uh, I haven't, um, I was sort of leaving some of those for a bit. So I had, but I've still got about 60 pages in that Rita book. And I have got some books which are less than 60 pages that I've done a few pictures in. So I was wondering whether to do those. I've got the Colouring Heaven Patterns book which is 48 pages I think I've probably done six so that's less pages even though I've only done very few pictures in it so that's one I was thinking I could fin try and finish next or um, um, what's the other one? Oh gosh I can't remember so another short book so I'm not sure. I just had this aim to finish three books by the time Johanna's new book comes out in October. And so I've done two, which is great. But uh, we'll see. Okay. What I'm going to do next is take a dark brown and do some shading. Uh, shading. Um, I'm going to use the... Um, burnt umber which is the dark brown we used for the um, gold areas it's just a really nice dark oops brown I just knocked something at it and so I'm thinking about where it's going to be just a little bit darker and just add a dark tone 
and really the top of the head is going to be quite light but um, looking maybe against the basket here might be a little bit of a shadow and also maybe I can hear my boiler making a noise in between these it's a lot of different noises sitting here it's quite interesting like that now I'm thinking now let's go down here under these and down this here just checking you're all still in shot oh. and there might be a little bit dark on this side of the leg where it's slightly rounded I'm going to put a little bit un under each of these um, feathery bits So I'm still, yeah, as I say, still pondering which book to sort of aim to finish next. And uh, it's interesting. I did do a lot of Rita's pictures from Rita's on over the weekend. There's a bit of shadow under there. And there'd be some under the belly. I feel like I want a sort of final colour all over the body to sort of bring it all together and I think I'm going to use the yellow ochre, it's another colour that we've obviously used in the gold, I think it will just work nicely, it will warm it all up, tie it all together, I hope you agree, I'm hoping this might be able to be the final layer but we'll see how it looks now what you could do is get a very sharp pencil I would probably not use a gold castle gold I would probably use a Prismacolor very thin or a Stedler Ergosoft something like that and you can draw on lots and lots of fur little dots like these excuse me like these lines around the face but um I may not do that. I think I'm just going to leave it. I think it looks quite soft anyway. The way these pencils go down, I keep catching on my sleeve, sorry, um, leaves quite a soft look on the page. So I think he looks quite soft anyway. I'm quite convinced that he's furry without the need for lines totally up to you. Now we'll come back um, tomorrow and um, do all the other details on the page I think or it's, been, it's like we've been hours doing this little lovely chap. So, uh, we've got the nice basket to do and the little fairy and this, I don't know what these are there's lots of these in the book, these little flying balls, <laughs> I don't know what they are, but they are cute. I think this is all coming together with this pencil, I'm liking the um, colour. It's warm and furry looking without um, taking from the gold. And we'll do the basket in a darker brown, I think, so that it looks different. She he's the same as these little guys, isn't he? I wouldn't know what colour. Hmm. I guess I'll have to have a think. And we're, as I say, we've got this sky to do as well. I've got an idea for that. I think we might keep it quite simple. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish doing this. 
little chap. I'm going to go and make a coffee. Get a few more bits and pieces before I uh, come back and finish off. And we'll see why. In the next video, so that'll be tomorrow. I'd actually written down um, some dates of videos I'm putting out and when. And I've already messed it up because I thought this would only take a day, uh, one session. And it's uh, taken a lot longer. More layers of colour, which is good. Having fun. I don't know why these sort of chubby creatures look so cute. I guess some um, baby creatures are cute and they're usually chubbier, aren't they? I don't know what it is. It's lovely. I think big heads and big eyes are supposed to be appealing to us, aren't they? It's looking cute. Okay, I'm just going to fiddle a little bit more. But I'm pretty much done now. So I shall, uh, I shall write all the pencil numbers and um, names, I mean, down for you. Um, in the description in case you miss them but obviously you can choose your own if you want something a little bit different but I'm quite happy with this slightly liney furry look to our little chap so there he is I shall just press I hope you take a photo there we go of it for my thumbnail so there he is so I'm going to leave it here so please do um, like and subscribe if you hit the bell you can get a notification and then you'll know when the next video is ready and comes out so that might be useful for you so that's that and as I say in the next video we shall hopefully um, complete the rest of the page including the background so that will be fun so thank you so much for watching um, enjoy the rest of your day and happy colouring <laughs>